So there's one thing about photography that I never get bored with. That's seascape photography. Not only do I live 10 minutes drive from this beach, it's always changing. It's never the same. The clouds, the tide, the current, the wind, uh, the lighting, it's always changing. And, uh, and this beach goes on for miles. So there's so much of it that I can shoot. Um, whether you live near a beach or not, it's, uh, it's also quite nice, you know, just to come down the beach, get your thoughts together with your camera, take some photographs. Uh, I often come down here without the video camera. At the moment, I'm talking on, on the camera. Um, but I often come down here without the video cameras, without the channel, and just do stuff myself. And it's just nice to get into it. Nice and calm, nice and relaxing. A bit like fishing, really, except uh, trying to take photographs instead of catching fish. Today, I'm shooting Ilford's Ortho 80 film. This film is orthochromatic, so unlike panchromatic film, it's not sensitive to red. It renders reds as dark or even black. One of the cool things about shooting this film is that you can develop it under safe light in your dark room, but just make some tests first. Today I'm at the beach and I want to try out two filters with this film. I want to try a yellow filter and an orange filter and I'm also clutching at straws with the orange filter as it's closing in on the red side of the colour spectrum but all these things are here for us to try out. I'm also going to be pulling the film so instead of 80 ISO I'm going to be metering at 40 ISO. That means I'm going to be overexposing by one stop but I shall be compensating in the development by slightly underdeveloping the film. I'm doing this in the hope that I can get more detail in the darker areas of the scene, such as the groin. I should have less contrast if I pull the film, but I'm not expecting too much. I'm using the Chinon CS 35mm camera and a 28mm Hanamex lens. This lens is great at f11, so I'm going to be metering for that. So, I've set my composition up so the frame includes some of the groin on the left some of the stones and also the horizon in the middle but most importantly I need to make sure my horizon is straight. I'm using my Siconic light meter and using the Lumisphere to take simple incident readings pointing the Lumisphere towards the sky. At f11 it's given me a reading of 1 15th of a second shutter speed. That's quite nice for these type of shots that will give me some motion blur to the moving tide especially over those stones. Because the sea tide is in and out, I'm quite happy to wait, watch and fire the shutter when I feel the moving water looks best, so I can just sit on the same scene and get different looks on each frame. So I'm not even looking through the viewfinder, all I've done is just compose the shot, make sure it's nice and level. Uh, for the focusing I'm going to be using the zone focusing, so I'm on F11, I've set one part of the zone focusing to infinity and the other side of the scale says to me I'll get everything in focus between four feet and right out there, which is inf infinite or infinity, whatever you want to call it. So four feet is around about here. So everything from here, right out there, should be in focus. For the first few frames, I shoot without filters. And then I change to the yellow filter, compensating by just half a stop. After some frames with the yellow filter, I'll change to the orange filter and then compensate by two stops. With the orange filter, I'm not changing the aperture at all. I'm just slowing the shutter speed to a quarter of a second, which would be even better for motion blur. Except with the orange filter, I'm going to be getting a more transparent negative because of the film being ortho. I already know this, but it's always worth trying something out. So I've got pretty much the same again. Um, oh, hey, I've taken off the... I've taken the filters off, so I've got no filter. All this scene here, and you can see the, the tile is just coming up and starting to kiss the, uh, the edge, just pretty much near where I am. So I'm starting with no filters now. Then we'll go yellow and orange again. Be interesting to see how those cliffs in the background look. Uh, but don't forget I'm pulling this film as well, just to give us a bit more detail in the shadow areas. That's nice. Just wait for that sea to come up a bit more, be nice. The tide's coming in at the moment. This one here. Gotcha. So this is my second scene. I like this kind of photography, especially with 36 exposures. As I said, because the tide is in and out, the scene changes all the time, so I don't have to run around like a nutcase trying to get rid of my exposures. Two scenes, various filters and various speeds. Like the first scene, I burst some with no filters, and then I changed to the yellow filter and then the orange. And if you're wondering why I don't wear wellies, well, I like the feeling of wet feet, and the salt is good for you. That's my excuse, and I'm sticking to it. 
So these filters I'm using are coking filters. I got these from, uh, from a school that, that had kicked out all their darkroom stuff because they wasn't doing it anymore. I got quite a lot of stuff from there. In fact, um, I went in there and I was in this school and it was a real mess. It was like in a shed, so everything was sort of really, really, you know, old and shitty. But I got these filters, these were looking good, and some other bits. And then I opened up a cupboard and it was full of Ilford and Kentmere paper going back probably to late 90s, early 2000s. Um, and I'm going back probably about five or six years ago. And I had so much paper, I gave them, I gave them some money for the gear that I took just to help the school out. But I had um, so much paper that it really did give me some darkroom experience playing around with different things without the thought of wasting paper, you know? Um, I probably had a, about 600 or so sheets. Some of it was really good. Some of it was just so low contrast, it had just got old. But it had given me a good stead in the darkroom, you know, experimenting with all this old, old paper, knowing that it only cost me next to nothing. So I could literally waste the whole lot. And I went through it probably within a couple of months, playing around, experimenting with stuff different developers and different ideas, different toners, and um, it really did boost my knowledge in the darkroom. So uh, if you can ever find a school or anyone that's thrown out stuff of expired paper or anything like that, if it's really cheap and you're getting into darkroom, get it, because it's uh, you can get yourself a lot of knowledge from it. So, right, I've done my shoot. I've got the ortho in there. I need to rewind the film back, actually. I'm cold. <laughs> I'm glad the rain held off. It wasn't meant to rain. But, um, so as always, I'm just going to rewind this film back just till I hear the click and the leader will be sticking out, which means I can load it straight onto the reel in the dark, save the can at the end as well. That sounded good. Uh, there you go, there's the film. Um, I loaded it in the dark to save myself a couple of frames. So I'm going to leave it inside the camera now um, until I get back and develop. I'm going to develop it in, I was going to do it in Rodno, the uh, ortho, but I've never developed ortho yet in ID11. So I'm going, to, I'm going to use ID11. I've got ID11, I've got plenty of it. I bought load last time. And for those of you wondering why I'm not using x as much, um, I had a bad experience twice this year with x and I couldn't understand it. It was kind of just had bits floating around in it twice this happened and um, it was just pretty much non-usable and I went online and did some research and I found on Twitter that the uh, Kodak x there was a certain batch that was a bad batch um, if you search on Twitter or, or online you'll probably find it typing Kodak x bad batch or something so I stopped using it for a while and uh, I've gone on to ID11 which is similar to Kodak D76 a little bit more coarse I think than X toll, but uh, nonetheless, it's a film developer, and you know, getting used to it. That's exactly why I'm shooting the ortho film, trying to see how it works with ID11 because I like using ortho film. So, if it works, if I find um, some nice tones out of this uh, seascape that I've done here, and in particular, fine grain, I don't really like any, any grain or coarse grain on, on my seascapes. If I can get nice fine grain out of it, then um, you know, bombs up. But don't forget, I'm pulling the film as well. And I pulled it just so I can, uh, basically I'm overexposing by a, uh, a stop. So I'm shooting it as if it was a 40 speed film, but uh, in effect, I'm pulling it in the development. So I'm overexposing and I'm gonna underdevelop, uh, probably by about 15% and see what that gives me. So trial and error, um, all this stuff I write down in my little book for next time, you know? Right, I'm gonna turn the camera off. I'm gonna sit here Look at the ships going past and think about when I can next go on holiday. <laughs> Greece or somewhere like that would be nice. After sitting at the beach for another half an hour wondering what clouds look like dragons, I got home and started to develop the film. I'm using Ilford's ID11 and as I purposely overexpose the film, I need to slow the development down to compensate. The massive dev chart says one part to one part I should develop for 10 and a half minutes for 80 ISO. 
it also says the same for 40 ISO, so I was a little bit confused there. So I've decided to knock two minutes off the time anyway and see what happens. I can always go back again if I'm wrong. Check out the new SFLAB beginner's guide to film photography and darkroom printing. Packed with lots of information, illustrations and exclusive unseen step-by-step -step videos, all in a simple and easy way to understand. Hit the link in this video's description or visit the SFLAB website for more details. So you can see on the legs here, that's the start of my film at the top, the first two at the top here. Uh, that was with no filter, and then I carried on without any filters. Bomb, 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 and then I changed over to the yellow filter. I started to get more detail, you can see it, I started to get a bit more detail. Uh, nicer looking legs, I feel, anyway. Um, well, that one's upside down, but uh, you get the idea. Now we went on to the orange filter, like I said to you, um, I knew there was going to be pretty much touch and go and transparent as we're moving up towards the, the red side of the, of the colour spectrum with that ortho film but I thought I'd try it out and uh, off with the second scene as well you can see no filter yellow filter here and then orange filter there interesting let's uh, let's make a contact print and this is a contact print that I made so you can, <laughs> you can see the orange filter just as expected you know I did say um, <laughs> the orange is flowing on the uh, end of the spectrum scale towards the reds so, but you know, these things are worth a try, see what happens. What else I was going to do, get some uh, more C shots on that 36 roll of film. In fact, I think it was 38 because I, uh, I loaded it to, to get a couple more frames out of it. So these are without filters. Uh, this one here, without, 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 without. And then I put the yellow in and it kind of just pulled some contrast back in, pulled some detail back in for me. So this one, this one, this one, this one. You can see they're the yellow ones. And then obviously the orange, well, we've just gone too dark. And then I changed scenes. You can see here we've got um, without the filter, the lighter ones, and this is with the yellow filter with the ortho, and again, the orange is um, completely shite. And this one here just had a slight swell here on the water, so I thought I'm going to go and uh, do some tests on this one and see if we can make a print. So as normal, just did a normal test strip, uh, two seconds, contrast two and a half filter. Uh, this was an F8 on the enlarger, so I did two, four, six, eight, and you can see I've circled the six. I just thought that had a bit more mileage in it. Um, the grey, the blacks are a, a bit grey, so I thought, well, maybe if I go for two and a half filter at six seconds, I can then just pop the blacks a little tiny bit with a contrast five. But before I did that, I did an overall section with six seconds, two and a half grade filter. I've got some real nice tones going on, but like I said, I just wanted to see if I could try and pop these uh, stones a little bit more. So I ended up doing six seconds contrast zero, and just for three seconds, put a contrast five filter in just for three seconds on the whole image and it really started to look nice. Which leads me to the first overall test print that I made and here it is here. So this was six seconds of contrast zero, three seconds of contrast five and then um, I just burned in the sky very slightly, graduated from the bottom up to the top with uh, contrast zero and the same again with contrast five. So that's how I built the sky. And then this part of the wave, I can remember waiting for these waves to come in because I knew it would give me this dark line across the centre, just underneath the horizon. So I was waiting for that, but I wanted to try and pop that a little bit more. So I used my burn tool here and just went across it like this with uh, contrast five, just trying to build up this wave. But um, it has built up, but not as much as I want. So I need to do a reprint, um, exactly the same, but this time hopefully get a bit more detail in that one, well, not detail, a bit more... Um, darkness if you like in that wave see if I can just pull it a little bit more other than that all the stones and everything's perfect I love it so this paper I'm using here is Ilford's multi-grade deluxe 12 inch paper um, it's quite hard hitting contrast but it's a nice paper to use so I've just instead of the Kentmere I've gone with this paper for a while just change about you know doesn't do any harm does it chop and change and see how it works with other other prints etc so contrast zero for six seconds I don't know if you can see it on the baseboard but you'll see roughly what I'm up to I'll tell you as I go along uh, contrast zero for six seconds we said there it goes done and then I stuck the contrast five in for around three or four seconds I just did that free hand one two three and off that'll do and I just need to put the contrast zero back in forgot to dodge the, uh, the sky so I'm just going to gradient the sky in freehand come down to the bottom of the horizon and then up slowly just gradient that sky and do the same with contrast five I should have done this as I was doing the overall print I forgot too much talking right 
And the same again with the five and up. And I'm holding my breath while I do that and literally just moving my body forward so it all sort of, you get the idea, right. Um, and then contrast five, just wanna burn that. I just wanna try and burn the, um, what do they call that, wave coming in. Try and burn that in, actually I can't do it this way, shit. There you go. So I'm just moving my burn hole up and down that wave for about six or seven seconds. Then just hopefully popping the horizon and that wave at the same time and then the opposite side. But unfortunately with the opposite side, I'm now hitting the um, wave breakers very slightly at the top, but It is what it is, they were dark. And that's done. I'm just gonna very slightly hit the bottom. I didn't do this before, but I've got a feeling about it. Just hit the bottom of the stones area with the contrast five. Just a little bit off. Done. I'll put it into the developer. So I'm totally Ilford at the moment. I've got Ilford Ortho 80. Ilford Paper and Ilford Multigrade Developer. And it's interesting that I didn't choose the negative without filter. I chose the one with the yellow filter. It looked a little bit darker on the contact sheet, but I think I miscalculated my contact sheet and printed that darker than usual. Um, but it still looked better than the negative without any filters. See it's coming through, it's got beautiful tones this print. And that horizon's nice and straight as well like I said. So we'll leave that running for about another minute in there, let them blacks really build up, hopefully we can get that wave built up as well in the background and have a look. <laughs> I'm really happy. Look at this one. This has come out really well. It's actually semi-drying at the moment. Uh, I need to wash it again and then put it in some selenium toner. But uh, I've got nice detail in the sky just where I gradiented it up um, with 5 and 0. Uh, contrast 5, popping that tiny wave in the background there and a little tiny bit at the bottom. But uh, uh, 0 and 5 split grade was pretty much working well all the way through. And this is the second scene that I shot with the yellow filter. And um, this was a contrast zero and a contrast five, uh, both for six seconds. And it kind of complemented the split grade, complemented each other there. Uh, just with the cliff, I just covered it slightly with the dodge tool uh, for a couple of seconds on contrast five. And when the contrast zero was running, I just uh, uh, ran around here, just this area on the contrast zero. Uh, just to just to make um, just to keep some of the whites back on the water and it's turned out really nice again so those prints are now drying at the moment and i'm over the moon with them i'm really happy so i'm putting those two out on ebay guys if anyone wants to auction for them i've got myself two and i've got two more that i'm putting out on ebay so if you want to support the channel uh you want to get one of the prints go on there i'll uh, put the link in the description of this video and these two prints will be on ebay up for auction for the next three days so the Ilford's Ortho 80 film. I really do like it. I've shot quite a few rolls now in the past. It's not my go-to film for everyday stuff, but now and again, I'll have a Spurge, get some and uh, try it out on different things. And in this particular uh, time, I've tried it out on some seascapes and I really like the results that I've come back with. I tried out the yellow filter, just see what happened. I pulled it a little bit just to see what had happened. And I tried the orange. <laughs> I tried the orange filter as well just to see what would happen. I kind of had an idea what would happen. I didn't get nothing out of the negatives, but you know, these things are all there for you to test and play around with and try yourself. You can read as much as you like online, but until you have a go and do it yourself and you can see for your own eyes, you know, I think that's the best way to uh, to learn and continue and, and gain experience in film photography. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget, it's on, the, uh, it's on eBay, those two prints, if you want to bid up for them. And thanks for watching. If you did watch till the end, thanks to all the guys that support me on the YouTube community members area and also on Patreon. I really appreciate your support, guys. So uh, have a great weekend. I'll catch you next time.